All right, well, I'm back. So, part two of my review, uh, Premier Plasma 4x4 CNC Plasma Cutting Table. Uh, other than uh, what I said in the intro, read the directions as you start to assemble it. It does go together uh, fairly easily. It's good to have another person because it might be awkward by yourself. Uh, a couple of the finer points, you know, follow the directions again uh, in sequence. Nuts, if you have a water table, the nuts have to go on the outside to get the water table to fit. Uh, and we didn't do that, so we had to turn them all around. Anyway, uh, the other thing, when you put your water table in, it's a beast. So make sure you orient it correctly. Now, as you can see, the way I put mine in, the slats go left to right instead of front to back, if you want to look at it that way. And uh, it doesn't allow for easy access I mean, I'm, I can load the parts from this side and have them slide in better, but uh, if you're right here like this, trying to get the material on, you're jumping over the slats. Anyway, something to consider. The other thing is you want to figure out where you want your origin to be uh, based on you know where the computers are and, and how you want to set it up. As it turned out, uh, my origin is here in this corner, so you have... Uh, X goes this way, Y goes this way, and Z is up and down. Uh, so uh, make sure you uh, orient it properly and, and get everything right so that something's not going backwards. When you put your gantry on, it can go either direction. So again, uh, notice how the, the torch offsets inside on mine. You can do it the other way depending upon where you want your origin and how you all want it, how you want it to set up. If you put it on and you don't like it, it's not that hard to turn it around. It's, it's just more, uh, just another operation. So something to think about. Uh, other than that, um, uh, you know, when you set it up, so uh, let's go ahead and start uh, Mach 3, which is the um, function. And you're going to see plasma CNC. All this is all set up for you already. Um, the, the comes with your computer, your control box. I bought this screen. Uh, you have to buy your own screen. Um, I would recommend getting a, getting a screen that has speakers in it because uh, if you're uh, listening to or re watching any of the tutorials that are all preloaded, uh, I have to come up with an, uh, you know, an external speaker, which is not that big a deal, but just something to think about. It does have a HDMI output and uh, input to the thing, so that made it easy. Uh, so if you set up Mach 3, here we go. The first thing you're going to see is that the um, it's going to be in a uh, emergency mode active, so you have to reset it. Now, how do you figure out if you're doing so? The x-axis moves right to left, right, left, and the z up and down, up and down. So when I um, had mine, my x-axis was going backwards, so I had to reverse something. I can't remember what I did. But it's in the directions, uh, and so if you do have a problem with your, your x-axis going the wrong way, um, or your y-axis, you can reverse them in the program. I forget where it is. Anyway, um, you know, you got your cable chase. Cables are always an issue. Be careful that uh, you don't, they don't get run over by the gears on the servos, because then you're going to have a problem. So other than that, like I say, nice little uh, four by five by five footprint. Fits nicely in my, my uh, work area. Um, plenty of access all around. I think I'll move everything closer when I get done uh, setting everything up. Uh, what can I say? Okay, so the water pan. When you go to uh, put water in it, make up this little elixir, sodium nitrite and Fizan 2.0, the sodium nitrite prevents all rust. It's unbelievable. And the Fizan 2.0 creates any bacteria from forming. And, uh, you know, here where I am, it's 100 degrees in the daytime, so the water does evaporate, and I have to, you know, I just had to put 10 gallons in yesterday. Uh, the recipe for this is, is anywhere on the internet. If you just Google a water table elixir or something like that, you can find it. Very easy to do and very effective. Um, how about the plasma cutter? You have to provide your own. Uh, I, I opted for the Everlast Plasma 60S. It's a nice piece of equipment. It's doing a great job once you get everything set up. Uh, one thing that, that uh, I found 
this button here, trigger, has to be on 2T. If you have it on 4, it came with 4T lock, it won't work. So make sure it's on 2T and uh, you should be okay. Uh, you're going to you know, run all your axes, uh, plug in the cables, it all go to the motors. The A and the Y go together, the Z and the X are independent. So A and the Y because there's, there's two motors on the Y axis. Um, and and if, they're, if they are opposite, if they go opposite each other, you can switch the cables around. There's another setting, but that's all uh, manageable in the, there's the software or changing things around. Um, other than that, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward operation. Uh, the only trouble really I had was the um, Proma THC, and I don't recommend having a table with that one because See, this is a 20 gauge material right here. It does have a couple of dimples and warps in it. Even the 14 and the 16 gauge I've been using uh, have it. So uh, if you don't have a torch height controller, your torch is going to keep grounding out. Uh, lots of uh, settings and idiosyncrasies in the software that you're going to have to fiddle with and make work for you. And that's just a matter of trial and error. Um, uh, another thing about the Everlast it has an issue, this is what I'm told, with the CNC board. So, you know, the Proma, you can set it up a couple of different ways. It calls for a uh, 150th divisor, and uh, the CNC card in the Everlast supposedly provides that, but when I hooked it up, uh, it, it didn't have enough uh, energy to, to power the Proma. So I went for the raw arc voltage, which was also part of the pinout on the CNC card. Um, and even that reads a little bit low, but it does work, and, and we'll make a part here in a little while. Uh, one thing about the um, CNC connector, which is right there, it goes into the back, and the cables are coming out. Um, this is what you have to work with, these little pins, and you have to crimp the wires onto these pins, and you get one shot at it. So uh, the, wire, the pins are all numbered, and in your uh, Everlast, the, the pinout is published, and then you can call uh, Everlast, and they'll send you a little bit more detailed stuff if you're unclear. Uh, but, uh, you know, I finally, the, the uh, on-off, the trigger switch that comes out of the control box is braided, and I had a hard time with that, so I wound up using uh, some, uh, some hard, solid copper wire, and I was able to crimp that a little bit easier. So... Uh, be careful with that. I wrecked two of them. So there, you can, I bought, bought extras on the internet. You can get them anywhere you want. So let's see, what else? Uh, got that. Um, hang on. Well, okay, so let's make a part. See what we can do. So I've got the Mach 3 open already. Let's go to uh, the other uh, programs that come with the uh, system are Inkscape and uh, SheetCam. Inkscape is a design program. Sheet Cam will take your designs and generate the G code so that you can um, run the parts. Hang on for one second again. All right, much better. So, the first thing we want to do is a new part file. And so, here's the Sheet Cam. There's a video on how to set it up initially. So, you can go to Job Options and it's going to ask you, well, how big your material is. And you can put in a specific, if you have a small piece, and you want to make sure that uh, your part fits within it, you can set it up 12 by 12, whatever, you know, it's, it'll, it'll change the dimensions on the screen. So whatever you want, I just usually, ah, see? Job options, 48, or 48, oh, that's 45, and whatever. Um, there are all these settings in here and, and just incredible. So then another one is the machine option and the same thing, working envelope, 48 by 48 or whatever. You, if you have a 2 by 2 or 2 by 4 or a 4 by 8, you can set up your uh, uh, working envelope appropriately. And that's just to keep everything straight. So now let's, let's do a part. Now the, the, uh, the, the machine came with 6,000 6, plus DXF, DXF files. Uh, so you can just start making stuff right out of the box if you want. Uh, let's do a new part. And then I already like this, got this chili Zia squirrel. And so then it's going to ask you uh, scaling inch 1 to 25.4 because 
uh, the, the brain of sheet cam is uh, metric, so one inch equals 25.4 millimeters. Uh, and supposedly you can do a custom, which is a scale, but I haven't tried it yet. Uh, lower left, because that's where my origin is. And okay, and let's see what happens. And here's my uh, Zia Squirrel. So, lots of zoom options, material. Uh, the part, zoom to fit the part, so you can do all kinds of stuff. Use your uh, arrow key right here. You can zoom in that way, move the part around. Um, so let's go back to zoom window part. Okay, now, as you can see, the machine has already drawn some lines for me, but uh, I like to, I don't want them to cut all those. So let's go to uh, edit contours. And then first thing we're going to do is always you want to cut the inside first and the outside last. Otherwise, the part will drop out and, and, you, and you'll miss. So this inside, let's do this. Let's do a move to a new layer, a new layer. And then let's call this inside. All right. And then let's take this one. Let's take this. Let's use the inside line. Move to a new layer. Let's call that outside. <clears throat> okay. Then, now that you have uh, all your lines, you have your contours set, let's go to, you need to start the operation. So now we want to do a, uh, as a, a new jet cutting operation, we want to do the inside first. And see how it's, say, it's saying what kind of offset. So we're going to do an inside offset, like that. And then uh, we're going to do a, an arc, lead in on the arc, and a lead out. I don't, I don't really need a lead out. And then the layer we want is inside. So do this, and then here you go. So it's going to start the lead in right there. It's going to cut these lines and then be done right here without a lead out. So now we have the swirl cut. So now let's do another jet cutting operation. And then it says, uh, Layer, outside. We want the outside offset, and it's showing right there. It's going to be on. Oh, that's no, no offset. Outside offset, just like that, and then lead in, and let's do a lead out on the arc on that one, and then, okay. And so now it's going to. It's showing what it's going to do uh, on the whole thing. Now the next thing I usually do is I'll go and do and run a test. So here we go. And that's showing exactly what it's going to do. It's going to cut the inside swirl first. And then it's going to jump, and then it's going to start the other one. That's it. Now let's post-process post it right here. And so then we're going to call it Zia Swirl. And you can save it, call it whatever you want. There's already one in there. We're going to replace it. Yes. I want to replace it. Yes. And then there are no, I didn't get, sometimes you'll get a triangle here. If it, if it doesn't like something, it'll tell you what the issue is. But got nothing on that one. Now we go to Sheet Cam. Or, I'm sorry, we go to Mach 3. So now let's load the G code. And we want Zia Swirl. And it's loading it up, and here we have it way over there. So now, uh, what I want to do is uh, get back and, and zero out my origin. So let's go right there. We're going to go X, Y, Z. And then we're going to regenerate the toolpath. Where is it? Right down here. And it's going to stop, and there we go. So then, what I always do, just to make sure, is, is run the uh, torch, and you can see it, the line, and then make sure I've got metal to work with. Looks good. Now go up the other, go up the y-axis. We're good there. And then back over to the zero on the x, and then. Or you can just hit the go to zero button. And it goes back down again. Now, everything looks good. Make sure your torch is on and it has air because if it doesn't have air, it won't work. I did that the other day. Here we 
we go. Everything looks good. We'll look at the uh, Proma here. Uh, a couple of settings on the Proma, delay, there's a bunch of settings you can go through. Um, there's another, uh, let's see if it works first. Are you ready? And I always recommend using uh, some type of dark glasses because I was watching this thing go the other day and uh, my eyes were burned without glasses. So you go to cycle start and here we go. Look at the port, the hyphen port. So, see how it's measuring the voltage. If you want your port to be closer, lower the voltage. And you'll see if it changes the cut at all. Not too shabby, so I cut that by hand. Fantastic. And then, not only that, you have a cute little swirl for some other activity. Very cool. And there we have it. The uh, Premier Plasma 4x4 CNC plasma cutting table with Chroma 4 type controller and the uh, floating head. Once you get everything set up, it's pretty easy to make parts and Here's uh, just another example of uh, some other stuff. There's some other pictures if you want. Uh, that is, this is uh, another one I did for. Now I'm rambling. Forgive me. Um, buddy of mine might be a license plate someday. Uh, here are petals that I uh, that I cut with a nest, and you can figure that one out on your own. And then what the petals are for, you take them and then. I can, uh, you mold, you uh, actually, what they call it, uh, it's like a blacksmith name, and you forge them into these roses. So, uh, you know, the first, these roses I cut by hand with my hand torch, and uh, uh, this, you know, boy, boom, 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 you're done. A couple of dragonflies, and uh, pretty good stuff. So, I highly recommend the uh, uh, machine, and take the time and it's an ongoing project and it's going to last me for a lifetime. So there you go. Um, thanks for watching and have a great day.